Hey there viewers, and welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. We've got this 05 Hondu CRV here. Uh, it's got some ABS lights, traction control, stability lights on the dash. Uh, we got to figure out what's going on, uh, get the uh, launch here booted up. We'll grab some codes out of it and see if we can't get her fixed. While we're waiting on that, I figure I'd show you which lights are on here. All right, so we've got our uh, VSA light down there. Of course, that's just our seatbelt light, ABS, and then the little uh, triangle with the exclamation point in it, which I believe if you were to turn VSA off, you know, I believe that light pops up. I uh, can't remember right offhand, uh, but needless to say, we have a problem with the ABS system. I got the info entered here, and I'll be perfectly honest with you, this guy did stop in a week or so ago and I did read the codes out of it and there was something to deal with ABS unit will quit working after 30 miles an hour oh lose communication uh, there was something in it with uh, brake fluid pressure and uh, brake fluid level uh, being low uh, I didn't have uh, much time to run through it then let's see here read fault codes <coughs> Yeah, oh, uh, now it's got one code in it, brake pressure sensor failure. Uh, like I said, the other day it came in, it had, or a week or so, I thought it had a second code for brake fluid level um, being low or open circuit or something like that. Uh, at any rate, uh, I guess while we're right here, let's take and pop back. So it appears to have a problem with the brake pressure sensor, which I believe we can look at here in the data that yeah, brake pressure so let's have a peek at that see where that is okay. well, there we are, brake pressure 21.5 is that megapascals that sounds like a lot I don't even know what that means in Americana um, well, let's see here we'll just pop on the World Wide Web. Oh, look at that. Oh. One megapascal is 145 pounds per square inch. Holy smokes. What was that thing at? It was at uh, 21. Every time I come across a Mega Pascal, I gotta do the conversion. Oops. Hard to do the classic reach around here on the camera. 3,000 pounds per square inch. I'm pretty certain there's not 3,000 pounds of brake pressure on it currently. <laughs> so, assuming the old launch here is giving us the right data, which I believe it possibly is because you know that's the code we have uh, let's go step on the brakes and see if that changes so, so I'm to see if there's a fluid is there a fluid level and just see Eric. what oh baby I'll bury it in yeah so right there brake fluid level switch low like I said, I was pretty certain it's had a, a code in it for that. Let's um, turn over here and grab a flashlight. Upcoming video right there, folks. Let's just check its fluid level. Yeah, fluid's full. Yeah, full right to the top. All right, that's interesting. Um, where the ABS unit lives. We'll double check. I'm 99% certain the pressure switch is part of uh, the ABS pump module assembly. But man, it smells good in here. We gotta go eat some lunch first. Uh, so we'll come back to that now that we know. Well, I guess before we can, let's just take, look at that data pit. Let's go smash on the brake pedal. Let's see if it does anything. All right, 
right, so that's brake pedal down hard. Oh, not getting any change there. Of course, I wonder if we, if that skewed at you know 3,000 psi. I wonder if we have to go beyond that range to make a change here. I don't know. Very interesting. Baffles me that that brake switch reads low, yet it doesn't have a code in it for it now for some reason. And the red brake light's not on. Does it even work? Yes, yeah, so the red brake light works, but why in the heck isn't that on? Huh, well, whatever. Brake fluid pressure sensor failure. We're going to go after this code first, and perhaps and come come back and look at that. Uh, brake level input there. Maybe we have to drive the vehicle for that to pop on. I don't know. I would think it would be stored in there as a uh, history code, but perhaps it only shows current codes. The very lovely Mrs. O got me a Coke. That's why I married her. That and one other thing. What's up, Mrs. O? Need some lunch. It smells fishy in here. It is fishy. Where's my food? It's in here. Oh, over in my office? Uh-huh. What are the dogs fighting about? A little piece of bone. I heard you, Chloe. You, you were being... She was bone. Chloe was in No. Turn. No, see, uh -huh. you don't know the whole story. Yes. Ding Dong here ate all of her bone. And when you were gone over to the school, there was a big powwow fight in here. And I came in here, and there's hair floating through the air. And Sheba took Chloe's bone. Oh, that was Chloe's bone? That was Chloe's bone, because oh, she ate hers first. You snot. So, yeah, you I, snot. yeah, I come in here, and she had Chloe on the ground, right by the throat, going for the death shot. Oh, it was the other way around this time. Oh, Chloe, Chloe was whooping on Chloe Sheba? Chloe was on, on top, but I gave her a good oh. boot. That's a good girl, Chloe, yeah. You never win. She always whoops on you. Oh, well, she must have just went for it. Yeah, it's because she got All the opportunity went for it, huh? You poor thing. Were you being naughty? She was just protecting her bone. <coughs> that she See, Chloe's trying to tell us the whole stole. story. Tell the whole story, Chloe. Tell us. Tell us. Nothing. Yeah, look at her. She has guilt. You have guilt, Sheba. Oh, uh, no. You look guilty. No? Oh, just one more thing here. Yeah, go ahead and check this out, guys. Vintage artwork by me. So my kindergarten teacher dropped this off today. I gave this to her over 30 years ago. Yeah, that's right. Good old Mrs. Hopkins. I think your writing still looks exactly my the same. My writing does look the same. That's how I know it's authentic. It has my signature on it. Look at that baby. She, <laughs> she kept it and then brought it to me today. It's a little deer. You must have been special. <coughs> it was probably some class project you had to do, and she's like, okay, take him home. You're like, yeah, whatever. And like, no. she just kept it. You it, think that's you made not it a story. Yes, I was like, I really liked this teacher. I'm going to make it for her. I remember that Is day. Is that like the very only vividly. teacher you ever liked? Your kindergarten teacher? What did you get to take a nap in that class? Yeah, we took a nap, and I kissed my first girl in kindergarten. Wow, you yeah. player. Oh, I was too. I remember we had these round tables. And you remember them? like cardboard things that look like bricks yes oh yeah i built me a little fortress Boom. a love fortress yep i wooed her into my come here young lady yep. Boom. i know your moves yeah you know my moves uh -huh. thanks lunch woman yeah good luck good luck yeah all right so i pulled this up some uh what i was hoping to be some information on this code we see here, 05 CRV, code 66, BSA pressure sensor inside the modular unit. Clear the code, test drive. Does the light come on? Yes. Change the modular unit. It's pretty cut and dry. Uh, this is probably one time when a flow chart works. So just want to take a quick look at a wiring diagram. We really don't have to mess with, uh, you know, checking powers or grounds or anything because you know, I mean, we communicate with it, we can read data. Pressure switch is uh, obviously internal. I just kind of wanted to see what uh, 
all kinds of stuff there were on here. It talks to the ECM. Yeah. There's an instrument cluster, so there's really nothing nothing to test <laughs> other than what we've done, so easy peasy, baby. Good thing I'm a good guesser. Uh, like I say, when it came in a while back, I read the codes. Ordered some parts. Yeah, look at that. Shoot that parts cannon. Uh, but no, I wanted to uh, make sure I had some parts here. You know, after I read the code, uh, made some assumptions. But I also ordered a used master cylinder because I swear last time it came in, it had a problem with the switch. And I bumped on it, seen the floater was up. Uh, so we'll, we'll address that. Uh, but I did get a used through LKQ. Uh, BSA uh, module. So um, I don't know if we can just plug this in. I doesn't. It doesn't look like it looks like that plug's pretty dang short to even get this down in. Uh, we're gonna have to assume at this point that this one's good. Fingers crossed. If I remember right, when I looked this up, this was a tremendous amount of money, brand new. You know, it was pretty. It was like two thousand dollars or something foolish. Uh, so we, you know, we grabbed a used one, uh, naturally. Uh, hopefully it's good. The only part that sucks is we have to unhook all the brake lines, which thankfully are not rusty, but we're going to have to bleed all four brakes. Um, that just bothers me over there, that master cylinder. I know that brake light was on when it came in. Uh, so I'll have to call a customer in the meantime. Excuse me. Ah, that's like fish burps. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll work on getting this swapped out, uh, at least get it plugged in, make sure our code goes away. Be really nice to be able to plug it in, but I don't think it's going to be an option. Now, at least my guess was lucky. I actually have the right part. You know, getting anything used is always a gamble, but you know, again, like I say, the new one is just you know prohibitive. You know, on a car this old. Get all lines cracked loose here first. So I am using a flare nut wrench, in case you guys are wondering about that. I like these Mac ones because they're super fat, uh, so you get quite a bit of purchase. They're about twice the thickness of a regular wrench, and I buy the ones that are, you know, flare wrench on one side and you know open nut on the other. Uh, this one's getting pretty pretty rusty, you know. Unfortunately, the only time I use these is usually dealing with you know brake lines. So if I wanted to warranty this out through Mac because the chrome's all rusty on it, they certainly would. But I don't know why bother. This is gonna get rusty again. They get pretty abused. loose now. I am going to get a diaper to stuff under here because it's probably going to drip quite a bit and uh, I don't want it to get on a serpentine belt. I have to grab a pick here or something to get that connector on now. <coughs> it's got a little tab on it you got to depress. Let me make sure I shut the key off. There's a connector, you can see that sucker's pretty solid as far as trying to get it, you know, while getting this way, plug it in the used one we have to make sure it's good. Let me get a diaper. Uh, you know what, before I shove that down there, there's one bolt. So this sits in there. This is going to sit in there like this. So there's one bolt down there. I'm going to loosen it before I shove the diaper in there. That one's slotted so we don't have to take it out all the way. Just a 12 millimeter. Sits in there on kind of an angle. Yeah, it's definitely not 12 millimeter. Do not listen to me. It's more like a 10. I'm just tricking you guys. Playing a silly game on you. Little trick. Let's see. Look like a 12. Back. Throw that in there, we'll 
leave that one like it is. I suppose we can just bust the other ones out while we're right here. Oh, I've got the lines cracked loose. There's one down there. There's one living right here. I'm loving my Harbor Freight impacts, let me tell you. The half inch gun, I have two of them now. Love them. The battery life is absolutely amazing. So I've got the one that the uh, viewer gave to me, plus my original order that was supposed to be here in January just showed up the other day, which I was pretty happy about. I was going to cancel the order, but I figured I better just have two of them. All right, so now we don't have to worry about getting brake fluid all over everything. Got it down below the brackets. Probably have to bend some of these lines a little bit out of the way. They should be pretty flexible once we get them all unhooked. I'm going to make you watch me unhook every brake line because I don't think it's going to be a very long video. Of course, we're going to have to bleed it, but I'm just going to stick the Brannock on it. We're just going to power bleed it. It'll be the easiest thing to do, unless there is a brake bleed function in the scan tool, you know, to kick the pump on or whatever. Come on, little fella. Oh, I ain't got quite enough lead in my pencil. Maybe one of these will turn easy for me. I got that WD-40 here. It doesn't, doesn't smell like the old classic WD-40. It's got some kind of blue torch in it. I don't know. All seems to kind of be the same to me. What do you guys like to use for penetrating oil? I know I, I use Croil. I got Croil around here, and I use it. And I've used PB Blaster, I've used Thrust, I've used Free All, I've used, uh, you name it. Um, you know, the Trainee Acetone. I don't know if perhaps the stuff I work on is, it's so rusty it's beyond penetrating oil, but I can't say I've ever had a fastener. Let's say it was, you know, I stuck a socket on it and it wasn't breaking loose. You know, I just couldn't get it loose. So you spray it with, you know, your favorite Panther P. And then I've never, I guess I've never done that and then just let it sit for a couple hours and then gone back and like, oh wow, that came right loose. You know, I've let them sit, I've let them soak overnight, sprayed, prayed, nothing. Never seen any really good results from anything. However, if you get a bolt loose and then start spraying it and working it, I've had some help at that point, but do they help any better than any others? I, I can't really answer that question. I just, I mean, once you get it loose, it seems like you can just spray it with water. You know, you just need some kind of lubrication, I think, at that point. Anyhow, let's quit yakking. Get this thing up out of here. I'm just going to slightly, very gingerly, bend those to the side. Let's see. I need to get Mrs. O. Come on, woman! Yeah, I do. You know how it is. Always. Yeah. All right, come over here. Come on. We're going to need your hands. They're going to get dirty, all right? Time to warm it up. Okay. So what you got to do, we just need to move these brake lines to the side. Okay? Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and grab them. Don't be scared. I'm pulling Yo, dude, don't, don't get all crazy on you me. Just... Said, you said don't be scared. Well, so was... you ain't got to be a freaking animal either. Just hold still. Oh, sugar. I never took the dang gal dang. Seriously. How long? Hold on. Just don't move. I just don't turn up like it's like leaking all over. Alright, just let him go for a second. Completely unprepared for this. Moron. Here they go. Now what? Just hold on. Entertain the people. Do big hand puppets or something. See? There's some freaks out there that like that stuff. Um, I don't know. What are they looking at? 
So I got it taken. Uh, don't don't be doing that. I got to take and get the. I can't even speak right now. You know what I'm doing. Um. No, I don't think they do. Taking these little guys off. There's one. There's another. What are you doing? Record me? Oh, yeah. I like the camera. <laughs> I was, I was totally unprepared for this. Like a jerk. Mm-hmm. Don't be zooming in. Don't, don't do anything. Just, just hold on. We're holding. Whoa! Did you see that? Oh, gotcha. This one, they cut the line a little too long. Can't get the socket out. Oh, it looks like they're trying to get it off. I'm gonna go... That's our dog's name. No, our dog's name's Fat Pearl. Okay, put the camera out. We're ready to go. We got our piece prepped. Oh my gosh, I should have. Let's see. Are we done dribbling? Let me just see. Okay, let me just yank our diaper out because I got to be able to get lined up here with what I need to get lined up with. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready? I guess so. Okay. Are you ready? I'm born ready, woman. You never have to ask me that question. Mm -hmm. right. right? Oops, just a minute. I'm on the wrong side. Oh, you're not ready. I'm always ready. All right, there you go. Good job. Go back and get back on Facebook there. Facebook. Thanks for helping us. And go pay all your bills. Yeah, go, go your... pay all my bills, yeah. Secretary Go be a good secretary. So I think what we'll do... Just do this very gingerly. There's no sense in even hooking up the brake lines until we plug it in. We don't even have to bolt this little guy down because if this thing's junk, which I hope it's not. Let me just look at the pins, make sure they're not all bent. If it's junk, then we're gonna have to call the salvage yard. Okay, there's that. Where's the alt or the launch? Look at the key on. Sweet, the lights are already off. Get you guys set up over here. Oops. Fall codes. No trouble codes, that's handy. And we will have to do some initialization once we uh, get this all finished. I just wanted to make sure we didn't have you know, a pressure sensor code in it. Yes. You know what, I wonder about uh, brick fluid level, Let's see if that still reads low. 0, 0.00, fantastic. Still baffles me. Alright, so we'll move the old diaper out of the way. With the ABS unit wiggling around here, I'm going to take and get all the lines started back on it. Sometimes that can be a little bit easier, especially when you had to, you know, bend them or tweak them out of the way a little. I'm just glad that we have a used unit that is good. Sometimes it can be a pain to return stuff to the salvage yard, especially, you know, if it's a week or two old. You know, most of them have a return policy that's pretty good. LKQ is pretty good. They, they're a pretty big corporation, so. All right, all the brake lines are started. That bolt started. The other bolts here. I don't know if I can reach this one or not. Yeah, well, guy. Oh, shimon. Right, there's that one. Another one way down yonder here. Um. <coughs> Get a little piece of rag here. Free tip Tuesday on a Friday. 
Everybody knows that trick though. Stuff a little piece of napkin behind it. Shop bag, paper, whatever you have. Something to make up that space. We've got a torque wrench. We'll tighten this up. Two other duggas. Tightening these up. Sometimes you can get lucky and try to bleed them right at the ABS valve, but the way these lines are designed, you know, when we unhook it, you know, we've got air. You know, at least you know where our fluid level is probably only to here. This bend, the rest of it likely dripped out. So, you know, I mean, if all your bleeders were seized up which this car we haven't even looked at yet, so we might be totally boned, but we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get there anyways. Let's go through and double check here. Okay, that's good. The lock is locked. I am gonna I'm gonna call the customer because usually when I read codes for people on the parking lot I give them a printout. Uh, I don't keep my own copy though. I'm gonna find out. I'm certain the red brake light was on and it had a code for that, you know, low fluid indicator. All right, good. I'm not crazy. And the customer did verify that the red brake light does come on. However, apparently they had to jump start it. Uh, this kid left the uh, lights on. No communications, let's see. Um, and he says since then it comes and goes. So we're going to take, like I said, I don't know what the code setting cry, you know, perhaps we have to drive it in order for that to come on, uh, in which case we can't do now. Um, what I want to do though is look and see. So right now we have our brake fluid uh, level up there and our pressure, which our pressure is still at zero. And the master cylinder is full, and a lot of times uh, you'll have these switches stick, you know, particularly I see it quite a bit on Fords. Uh, you know, fluid gets low, light comes on, you fix whatever the brake problem is for the low fluid, of course, fill it up, and then the light stays on. Well, typically, you know, come over to the master cylinder, you know, bang on it, and that value will change and the light will go out. Uh, in this case, what I want to do, I don't know how this circuit works, if it's just a switch to ground or it's provided power, if it opens or closes a switch, I don't know. It's kind of irrelevant at the moment. It's just, that's typically how they work. They either open or they close. Give it a minute to change. Right now it still says low, so I'm just going to jump her the two pins. The pair of pliers here. I just want to see if it changes state. It does. Let me zoom in on that. Okay, so we can see currently it reads low. And I jump her the two pins and the value reads normal. And then open circuit, it reads low. So, the master cylinder is completely full. Uh, that tells me that that switch inside the master cylinder is indeed bad uh, and that's probably why I ordered a master cylinder. Shut that off. There's your scan tool. Let me grab set this somewhere. Set it somewhere or I'll forget where I put it. I do have another box here in the same place. Like I say I ordered I did order some parts based on codes only. Can you imagine that? Uh, if I remember correctly when I looked, I was going to get this so you can hear the little float in there. This here we can probably plug in and then just flip it upside down prior to getting too hot. Well, so my thought was on this, I was going to get 
just this switch from Hondu. But if I remember right, it was not available separately. And then if you bought the whole master cylinder, it was a stupid amount of money. So what I was thinking, in this case, the reservoirs are replaceable. His master cylinder is fine. He has no complaint with the brakes. Uh, so perhaps we can just take the bolt out, you know, if the switch is any good. And then just transfer the whole reservoir is my thought. So we'll take and plug this one in. Supposed to turn the key back on. Ready to shut it off. So the key's plugged. The key's plugged in. The key's turned on. Uh, let me just break the level. This one reads normal. It shouldn't be. So that's kind of interesting. Right now it reads normal. When I flip it upside down, it reads low. Why is that? Does that mean if we take brake fluid out of that one, it'll read normal? Well, this has me a little confused currently. I would assume this should be reading low. Unless this thing has the same dang problem. I'm not sure how the switch works. I'll tell you what, why don't we just dump some brake fluid in the used one just to see what happens here. Maybe our, our, is our pits inverted on that scan tool? That would be curious. Wouldn't be the first time I've seen the old launch have wrong data pits. I'm gonna go get some brake fluid. We'll get to the bottom of this. What we should do right now is get a different scan tool because perhaps that's why the light's not on right now. It's an intermittent problem and normal is really low and low is really normal. So currently, with no brake fluid in a master cylinder, it reads normal. Um, we're going to take, this is just the used one that we had purchased. I'm going to take and dump some fluid in it. It's probably going to peter out here. Yep, look at that. Son of a monkey. Frickin' scan tool data. This is where you get burned, folks. Now that it's full of brake fluid, it reads low. So that is why our light is not on. <laughs> you freaking scan tools, I tell you. Chinese got to get their stuff straight. So, that makes sense. That's why I did not have a code this time around. Um, Alright, well, at least we know. Uh, I guarantee if we grab the Altel or another scan tool and plug it in, hopefully these are reading correctly. Thankfully, our pressure switch data on here was reading correctly. So, you know what, I wonder if we set a code because when we were jumping it, I bet we did, watch. Brake fluid level low, boom. Ah, uh, gosh. So, apparently the switch is intermittent when it uh, has its fault. Right now it is working, being that low means normal and normal means low. I guess I can leave it up to the customer at this point. Do we, uh, do we just change it? Uh, because he does get his intermittent red brake light to come on. We do know it did have a code stored in it, you know, for that uh, system. Or do we just wait on it? Uh, I have the part, it would be my, I hate replacing something without proven fault, so it would be um, my suggestion to just leave it, it's nothing that's going to impede the ABS system. Uh, so personally I would just leave this how it is, we know our scan tool is a liar, nothing new, not trying to put down launch, scan tools lie all the time, do not always believe your data uh, without proof. Um, you know, I'm the exception 
you know, our pressure sensor, it's internal. We almost have to believe it. It's nothing that we can physically see or touch or test. In this case, we can see the switch. And fortunately, we had a, you know, a known good unit and then discovered that this is wrong. I'll give them a buzz because if we're going to go through and bleed the system, I don't want to bleed it all out and then have them say, yeah, let's change that just because, uh, you know, because I don't want to have to bleed it again, which technically we shouldn't because the mass cylinder should stay full. So let me see if I can get them on the phone again. And in the meantime, we'll get the car up in the air so we can get this blood out. I think before we get too far, uh, we're going to do the um, sensor adjustment for the all rate sensor, G sensor, brake pressure sensor, um, steering angle sensor. Uh, let's see, vehicle must be on level, steering wheel straight, brake pedal not pressed, hit OK. Neutral memorization procedure. Operation has been successful. Turn the switch off. Switch back on. Procedure successful. Okay, so that's pretty simple. You know, no real programming, just essentially a relearn of the all rate right sensor, the G4 sensor, steering angle, and current brake pressure sensor. Uh, so I'm going to go through. I'm uh, going to make sure we don't have any codes stored in it, we'll clear the codes out of it, and then get these brakes split out. We'll take it for a test drive, see if we can get this to act up on us here. I'm waiting for this guy to call back. Uh, fault codes. We just had our old one stored for brake fluid level low. Alright, so we'll get the wheels peeled off it. Cross your fingers, the bleeders are able to come out. The tires are off at, at a glance. The bleeders appear to be in decent condition. What we gotta see if we can do is get our little adapter up on this joint. We gotta be able to make a tight seal. I don't know if we can nab the next one out of there or not. Oops. Get our chain straightened around. Come on, little fella. Come on. We wanna be able to get a good tight seal on here when we put our pressure bleeder on it. Doesn't look like we're gonna be able to get that extra link. We've got enough thread on this. I think, we, yeah, I suppose we probably do. So at this point, I mean, you can have somebody get in there, you know, pump the pedal and do it. Uh, you know, do it that way too. You know, if you're doing this at home or whatever. I'm just going to use a power bleeder because it's a little bit easier for myself. Should have a tight seal. What we'll do, where's my diaper? We'll throw this underneath it because if we don't, and you put the pressure on it from the power bleeder, it oozes everywhere. So let me go get the bleeder. Get the bleeder will hook to it. It's full of dot three fluid. The system can actually use dot three or dot four. We're gonna flush it all so it doesn't matter. Turn the bleeder on. Give it a second, make sure we don't have any little sprayers. You got one little pinhole coming out, let me tell you, you'll know about it. Okay, I think we've got, can't read my gauge very well, it's in too much brake clean. Got about 18 pounds of pressure on it. So now we'll grab a wrench and a bucket and start bleeding. Pull the rubber cap off, what is that, 10? Oh yes, hallelujah. Open this up. So I work the threads a little bit here. All right. And now I'll just leave it to dribble. Let it push the initial mass out of the reservoir. You know, we'll be able to tell when the fluid starts to clear up. 
Uh, it's also my habit as this sits here and, and bleeds, I'll get up there and stroke the brake pedal a few times. Uh, you know, just kind of speed the process up. Yes, it'll suck in a little bit of air, but it has, you know, that constant out pressure. So I'll go do that and show you what that looks like. So I'm just slowly depress the pedal. And then let back up on it. Just kind of help it uh, work through the system there. And even if it does suck back in, like I say, it really doesn't matter much. But I'm just going to continue this process with all four wheels uh, until, you know, we've got good clean fluid flow out of each wheel. See a few air bubbles coming out of it right now. You can see a little bit of air coming out of it. <clears throat> just to be expected. Here looks like it's just about done. Fluid's starting to run pretty clear. It's got a little yellow tinge to it. I'll let it go for a couple more minutes. We've got quite a bit accumulated down here in our bucket. But I'm not seeing, well, there's just a little bit more air there. So I'll let this side go for a few more minutes, and then each other wheel is going to be exactly the same. We'll go over the other rear wheel and then do the fronts, and should be good to go. You didn't think we'd forget that, did you? So my habit, usually after I'm done bleeding, is to go get a Band-Aid. Now you do that before you're done bleeding. Uh, so after we're done bleeding brakes, hose off the brake fluid. Use excessive amounts of brake parts cleaner. And then what I'll do is I'd like to get a little bit of fluid film. And I usually shoot right inside the bleeder nipple. And then around the threads of it. And then we put the cap back on, so hopefully next time we have to take it off, it comes off. A nice and proper job. So this is what we ended up getting out of it. Pretty fair amount, uh, but probably a little better in a quart. Uh, no surprises. Uh, this bleeder came out a little bit hard. Just had to work it. So now we'll get her unhooked do that you got to give it a classic wrap around because she might spit just a smidge. Oh, not too bad. But you want to be able to catch whatever you can. Usually before when I'm bleeding, of course you guys have probably seen the video on our brake bleeder. If not, I'll put a link in the description. But when you're doing the last wheel, you shut your bleeder off when it's all finished and let the pressure equalize so it doesn't blast at you when you come up here to unhook it. A lot of air came out of the front, not so much in the back, but had a lot of air in the rear. Or a lot of air in the front, rather. Whatever I said. Whatever I said. That's what I mean. Okay, here we go. That's on. That's good. Crap, I'm out of brake clean. It's like being out of beer. Just a little bit worse. Okay. Got a new can. What I want to do is what, give these a little toot. Make sure they're cleaned off. That way when we get back from our drive, we can tell if we have any leakage, which I don't think we do. But better safe than sorry. You don't want to get back and see a little spot and then wonder if it was there before, so now we know. So, we need you out at uh, Bay 2. Uh -huh. You need it in Bay 2. If we had a PA system, I'd bark it over the PA, but... You can call me on your phone. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. Alright, come let us out. Chip, chop, chop. That usually doesn't make her go any faster. Bye. Good luck. See ya. See ya. <laughs> Alright, let's roll.
first we're just going on a little normal toot. Make sure the brakes work good. And then what we're going to have to do is uh, double check, make sure our ABS functions. We'll go do some skid outs, I call it. Oh yeah, brake pedal feels fantastic. I've seen it before though, where you know you get some air trapped in the ABS valve, you go out and slam on the brakes, do an ABS skid, now your brakes suck, you know, pushing some air through. Uh, so that's why I always like to do it. You can also do it on the lift, you know, all four wheels off the ground, just run it, and then just you know hit the brakes and ABS pump kicks on and cycles and carries on. I like to do real life scenario though. Yeah, the brakes feel good. So we'll come up here by the by the ballpark. It should be kind of gravelly. Enough to do a little panic stop anyways. We'll pull in there all hot. Oh, crap, you're tipping over and hold on. Here we'll come in hot. This is pretty loose gravel. Let's see what we got. You ready? One, two, three. But hold on. Well, yeah, the ABS kicked right on nicely. So then, what we can do is make sure all-wheel drive portion of it works as far as traction control. So we'll pull over here where it's loose. Yeah, seems to be kicking just fine. Another ABS stop. Oh yeah. Beautiful. The lights on the dash. Alright, no lights on the dash. Red brake light never came on. Of course, you know, it does work with a parking brake. So like I said, I'm gonna leave that for right now, you know, at least until I hear from them, but what I wanna know, I mean, it's gonna be my suggestion to them not to mess with it until, you know, until it acts up again, if it does. Uh, so we got no codes. One thing we didn't do yet is go back and look at our data stream here. Uh, break pressure. All right, we're at zero. I'm gonna apply the brakes. And it went up to about five megapa. I got moderate brake pressure on it. The harder you push it, obviously the higher it goes. And then back to zero. Brakes reapplied. So our brake pressure sensor works. Fancy. Well, folks, we'll leave it at that. Um, Really nothing more to do. Uh, like I said, I don't want to go wing a sensor on it on the master cylinder, even though it had that code prior. You know, I had bought the master cylinder, bought the ABS valve on, you know, code only, you know, parking lot diagnostics. Um, you know, simply so when it did come in, I would have some parts, assuming we needed them, and I can't, you know, honestly sell them that without it, you know, malfunctioning where I can see it. Uh, you know, unless they just, you know, tell you to, which I think would be foolish. So we'll hang on to it for a while, uh, see what happens uh, from here. We, obviously, we've fixed the brake pressure switch, and I believe that the used unit is the way to go. It is a fraction of the cost of the new one from Honda. You know, I can't see putting $2,000 into this, you know, telling your customer, oh, yeah, it's going to be, you know, two grand when you can get a used one for, you know, a couple hundred bucks, put it in recalibrate it, bleed it, and good to go. Um, and obviously works, the ABS works, brakes blood out fine, so I'm happy with the repair. And uh, I'll keep you guys up to date if that you know fluid level sensor ever conks out. And I guess it's also a good lesson to, you know, if something's not making sense on your scan tool, either grab a different scan tool or verify it another way. You know, we verified it. Uh, you know, by jumping it, we've seen that it had the ability to switch from normal to low. However, the data pids are reading backwards, and that's why we didn't have, you know, the code for it currently. So, it all makes sense in the end. Good thing we had a, you know, known good one 
to test it from. Of course, we could have looked up the theory and operation on it too, you know, open circuit, closed circuit, which, you know, which is full, which is empty, or which is low, rather, and, and had gone about it that way and made the same assessment. So I guess with that being said, uh, I got to keep motoring. We've got a caravan here that got towed in beside me. Apparently doesn't run. Got a Subaru over there that's missing cylinders one and three and a Grand Marquis that has the rear differential locked up. Yay. That's all on top of those are just stuff that was towed in. So I gotta get I gotta get moving. Uh, anyhow, you know where to find us, Google Plus, Facebook, Patreon. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that, and click that notification bell. And just remember viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.